The main topics that will be discussed throughout this presentation include the qualifications of forensic scientists in law enforcement, types of CSI positions and their educational requirements, and the chances of obtaining a job in the field of forensic science. Crime scene investigators and forensic scientists have crucial jobs when it comes to our legal system. According to Richard Saferstein, the former chief forensic scientist of the New Jersey State Police Laboratory and author of the criminalistics textbooks, forensic science is described as the application of science to criminal and civil laws that are enforced by police agencies in a cr criminal justice system. Just like police officers, Forensic scientists must be mature and have the utmost integrity. Most of the time, the things that they are doing on a daily basis are determining whether or not someone is guilty or innocent and either going to jail or being exonerated. So when it comes to determining what makes people qualified to work these jobs, there's a combination of knowledge and personal traits that are necessary. Any person applying for or looking to obtain some level or type of crime scene investigator job should start by learning about the job they're interested in and finding out how to apply. Across the country and from department to department, there are different levels of qualifications and experience needed in order to be considered for one of those jobs. The only way to know exactly what you need in order to be qualified for a job is to go to that certain department of which you are trying to work for and find out what they require for you to be qualified. You could make yourself the best candidate possible by earning a college degree, working jobs or internships in related fields, getting certifications in said fields, and continuing to learn about the newest breakthroughs and technologies that will make your resume stronger as a whole and build your skill set competitively. Some of the national organizations that help with the requirements and training needed for law enforcement include the National Forensic Academy, the National Institute of Justice, and the National Forensic Science Technology Center. How about our own local law enforcement? At the Barnstable Sheriff's Office, each department has their own requirements, so it's difficult to make one broad statement to describe a standard set of qualifications. However, it is noticeable that no matter the level, each department requires a minimum of a GED or high school diploma. One of our group members, Ryan, had the pleasure of talking to a correctional officer named David Wiseman from the Barnstable Sheriff's Office. Mr. Wiseman has worked at the jail for about five years. Ryan reached out to him because on the Sheriff's Department website, there was only the ability to apply for a correctional officer position and not for a crime scene investigator or a forensic scientist. He asked him how one would go about applying for one of those positions and Ryan was told that the only way to apply is from within the department or as a lateral transfer promotion from some other type of police officer job. Mr. Wiseman wasn't able to tell Ryan of any special circumstances where someone who had not worked in the sheriff's department or at a police station prior had gotten the job. That job, or the notable CSI position in our local law enforcement, is a CIO, Criminal Identification Officer. The Barnstable County Sheriff's Office Bureau of Criminal Investigations, or BCI, is currently comprised of eight CIOs who are appointed deputy sheriffs and are Massachusetts certified law enforcement officers. All of the pictures on this slide come straight from the Barnstable County Sheriff's Office website. The Bureau assists Barnstable County's 15 communities and the Cape and Islands and also works with federal and state law enforcement agencies. Most of their assistance calls relate to the processing of crime scenes with motor vehicle crashes, assaults, breaking and entering, robberies, and home invasions. The Bureau is also part of the preparedness response activated for natural and man-made disasters. CIOs are trained experts in the field of forensic investigation and their duties include, but aren't limited to, gathering, analyzing, and the identification of physical evidence. 
Some of the forensic disciplines for which they are trained include latent fingerprint comparison, photography, DNA collection, crime scene investigations, and even more specialized training in forensic video analysis, computer-generated facial compositions, composite artistry, and regiology, which is a discipline of fingerprinting that helps analysts distinguish between usable and unusable prints. CIOs also supervise and assist in collecting evidence at crime scenes, and they testify in court as to the significance of the evidence. At the state level, the Massachusetts State Police Crime Scene Services Section is responsible for crime scene documentation and for the collection and processing of evidence at major crime scenes throughout the Commonwealth. Their mission is to provide quality service to the citizens of the Commonwealth while recognizing that CSI is the meeting point of science, logic, and law. The section is comprised of 64 state police officers and four civilians with seven laboratories throughout the state. Personnel assigned to the section are available to respond 24-7, 365 days per year. Each trooper must complete extensive training and maintain current knowledge through ongoing training and education. The Crime Scene Services Section personnel respond to homicides, armed robberies, sexual assaults, suspicious thefts, motor vehicle accidents, and breaking and entering. Their duties include collecting and processing evidence at major crime scenes and crime scene documentation like crime scene photography, evidence processing, and the recovery of latent fingerprint, footwear, and tire track evidence. Again, the particular requirements for each agency are set by that organization, and therefore, there is no specific formula to follow for this career path. In addition, some crime scene investigators are police officers that train on the job to become crime scene investigators. According to the American Board of Criminalistics, to qualify for certification through their organization, through the professional experience and training, an officer must have two years of experience and be actively working in criminalistics. Depending on what field of criminal justice you're planning on going into also determines the educational requirements needed to obtain certain positions. If you are interested in going into the forensic field, some of the required classes you need to have are advanced math, biology, chemistry, psychology, and sociology. Most forensic science technicians need a minimum of a bachelor's degree in a natural science, which includes chemistry or biology. Particular organizations may require a bachelor's degree at minimum, but may also give certifications for individuals who possess adequate on-the-job experience. A degree in a forensic science program may offer areas of specialty which could include toxicology, pathology, or DNA. Some of the other forensic specialties or textbook mentions include forensic physical anthropology, forensic odontology, and forensic entomology. Even if a student wishing to follow this career path doesn't choose to study forensic science specifically, they are still urged to take as many forensic science classes as possible. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, even though a master's might not be required, many individuals in this field do have a master's degree. While extra credentials or certifications might be valuable in bolstering a resume, most often they are not required to become a crime scene investigator. In addition to academic experience, crime scene investigators must also have training while on the job. Since there are many different types of positions a crime scene investigator may have, their specific training will be dependent on the type of work they are assigned to. For example, certain laboratory specialties might require an additional exam to be taken to become certified by an accredited agency. Similarly, positions at agencies such as the FBI may have more challenging requirements. Local police departments may have their own internal requirements as well, as was shown previously with Barnstable's Bureau of Criminal Investigation. As another example, in Indiana, police officers need to be certified through their department after 120 hours of on-the-scene experience and an examination as well. 
After the initial certification, those officers need to recertify every three years and complete continuing education classes. The chances of becoming a forensic scientist in law enforcement has become increasingly difficult as more labs are trying to improve their quality assurance through accreditation processes offered by the American Society of Crime Laboratory Directors, or ASCLD, and certifications given by the American Board of Criminalists. Considering the rise in the profession's popularity from shows like CSI, Crime Scene Investigations, and other spin-offs, the media has influenced what is known as the CSI effect, which among other things has also encouraged many high school and college students to take forensic science or criminalistics courses. However, even after gaining the additional education and training that is required, there is still the issue of the number of job positions available. Our text mentions that private, non-government labs are taking on a greater importance in our legal system. This might be one of the reasons our group had difficulty trying to find CSI jobs through our own mass.gov website. It's nearly impossible as there are currently no available listings. There is also the fact that positions tend to be very competitive within small departments, like was shown in Barnstable, where the CIO unit is comprised of only eight specialized officers. This slide displays a map from the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, which shows the limited employment of forensic science technicians by area. After our research, Group 3 has come to the conclusion that there are many different paths one can take if interested in a CSI or forensic scientist position within law enforcement. The amount of experience, education, and certifications that are necessary to qualify for such positions vary depending on the type of position desired and what departments are hiring. As the CSI effect has increased interest in the field, it has also increased the need for better quality assurance that can be achieved through more accreditations and certifications. Therefore, the more experience and education achieved, the more competitive one will become as a potential crime scene investigator. We hope you enjoyed our presentation and would like to give credit to all the sources that we used in our research.